Hello and thanks for watching this video. This time I would like to share something that is not common and you don't see it everywhere. I call this video the PRC25 that never was, because the radio that I will share almost got to be made, but for some reason the technicians changed their minds and modified the radio to the one that everyone knows. But first I would like to make a little introduction so you can understand the evolution and steps that lead to the PRC-25 radio. Let's start back in the Second World War. The first backpack tactical radio that the US Army adopted during the Second World War and was capable of being used while on the move was the SCR-300, the first walkie-talkie. This radio had 0.3 watts of power output and covered 3 miles. It was an FM radio using the 6 meter band. Its frequency range was 40 to 48 megacycles. It was used during World War II and Korea. The PRC-8, PRC-9 and PRC-10 these radios were an improvement over the SCR-300. The system was divided into three bands and for the armored vehicles was 20 to 27.9 megacycles, one for the artillery 27 to 38.9 megacycles and one for the infantry 38 to 54.9 megacycles. The problem was that the armor was not able to communicate with infantry. All were FM radios and with an output power of 0.9 to 1.2 watts. They were used in Korea and Vietnam. They entered service in 1951. Part of the family of the PRC 8, 9 and 10 was the PRC 6. The PRC 6 is a one frequency radio used at squad level. All these radios were an improvement over the SCR 300. They made miniaturized tubes in order to reduce the size of the radio and the weight. The development of a replacement for the PRC 10 family of radios started in 1952. In 1957 RCA launched the first prototype, a developmental model, the PRC-25 XC1. The XC1 was replaced in 1958 by an engineering model, the PRC-25 XC2. And in 1959, a testing model was ready, the PRC-25 XC3. In 1961, the PRC-25 was officially adopted, but for some reason it would not be put into full-scale production for another four years. In my opinion, the XC3 was the radio that was going to be mass produced. Even a vehicular mount was available for the XC3. And there are some photos and a film movie showing a soldier carrying this radio.
There were two stages of the XC3. The first one being the original design that included the auxiliary receiver. And a second stage where the XC3 was simplified by taking out the modules for the auxiliary receiver. The film movie was made back in 1960 and the photos were taken in October 1961. In one of the 1961 photos we can see that the XC3 has the auxiliary receiver front panel labels covered with green paint. So I think that by that time the auxiliary receiver was discontinued. There are a couple of reasons why the auxiliary receiver could be discontinued. Simplification and cost reduction. The final radio cost $1200 each and for 1964 that amount was equivalent for $9,200 of today's money. Perhaps the money issue was the most important problem and that was why the auxiliary receiver was discarded and the front panel was simplified. Without a doubt, and for a collector like me, the PRC25 XC3 radio is much more interested than the final radio. I can imagine the engineers trying to develop the best radio possible and at the end having to cut improvement because of money. Controls are similar, but the previous radio, the XC3, was a little bit more complicated than the final result. Here you can see that the audio connectors were the same, in the same position, although these are a prototype of the U229. Volume control is almost in the same place. Frequency selectors in the same place and works just the same where you have the pre-select system the power on or off in this radio is in the right while in the prototype is in the left here you select with the same knob squelch in this you have a separate knob in the right then you can select the receiver transmitter, the main part of the radio, and the auxiliary on. This is the auxiliary receiver. In this position is the voice control carrier. In my opinion, this position was to prioritize the receiver of the main radio. You are listening to the auxiliary receiver and if a transmission starts entering the radio in the main frequency, in this position you are going to listen to this instead of the other one. Auxiliary calibration, in this position you calibrate the receiver and also you turn on the lights on the dials, both dials. Retransmission. Retransmission is to use the radio to retransmit the, the frequency to another station. In this case, it's in the left instead of the same knob in the other radio. Relay, in this case, light is to light the dial. Band selector, low band, 30 to 52, high band, 53 to 75. In this case, it's in the, in the left. Antenna mount is the same, the same position, although this is not original, but I put it to complete the radio. The power plug, is a feature to let the vehicle be used as a vehicle station. You connect the battery 
voltage here with a special mount. In the final production radio, this move to this area. Auxiliary antenna, almost the same position. This knob over here is to lock the knob for the auxiliary receiver. So you cannot move. Other than that is the same the same radio. Internal, I will show you photographs and you can see that is basically the same configuration.